It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I recently received another email from my dear friend, Mike Home. Mike, thanks for keep sending these over. They're so awesome. Today, I want to discuss one I received that he titled, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And this was interesting to me because he brought up something that I didn't know about. So here we go. He said, in the U.S., National Public Radio runs a popular weekly news quiz show called, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I was listening to the show the other day while driving back from the airport to my home. And it got me thinking and laughing, too, because it's a funny show. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Might be a good mantra for scrum teams to use when they're product owners or perhaps better or perhaps better. Wait, wait, tell me later. Agile teams need to be willing to start without having all the answers up front. Let's pause there for a second. I wholeheartedly agree that part of what makes Agile less Agile is when organizations dig in and try to wait for all the details to be hammered out and for everything to be smoothed out before they start working. There comes a time and point or case in point where you have to get something done. And even if you begin with the knowledge that you have and what you know and you build around what you know, that's going to help you really leverage and be successful. I think that, on the other hand, it's irresponsible to start without having at least some knowledge. So it's one of those things where how much is too much? How much do I need to know? And what, where do I draw that line? Right. And I think that's the key and it's, it's not always easy. So let's see where Mike takes this. He says, some teams though, expect the product owner to have every answer figured out before they can, before the work can begin. This happens with new teams and more frequently than you might think. Also with teams that have been doing scrum for a while. Teams that refuse to bring a backlog item into the sprint until they have all the details buttoned down are getting in the way of their own ability to be agile. I want to read that one more time because he had it all capped or bolded rather, and I think I know why. Teams that refuse to bring a backlog item into a sprint until they have all the details buttoned down are getting in the way of their own ability to be agile. Part of being agile is the problem solving capability or figuring out how to do things in a productive way. And if you're on a team that's not actively engaged or participating in that, and you're just constantly waiting for everything to be handed to you, you're not going to be very successful. Things are going to fail. You're going to struggle. There's going to be problems, right? So uh, most commonly, this shows up as a team is demanding the product owner provide full acceptance criteria for each product backlog item before it can be brought into a sprint. This is a step directly back towards waterfall or sequential approach. Amen, brother. I agree. It's essentially, it essentially establishes a gate at the start of each sprint. No work is allowed through that gate until all open issues have been resolved. I'm going to go here. A lot of companies and a lot of teams call this the definition of ready. Now, there's a difference between definition of ready, meaning that the work is ready to be taken into a sprint because we have enough information to begin, and a definition of ready that says everything has been completely hammered out and etched in stone so that we can progress or move forward. Uh, So to overcome this, the team members need to become comfortable with uncertainty. And uh, so do the product owner and business stakeholders. You don't need to have all the answers to start. You need to have all the answers to finish. Can we get a shirt that says that, Mike? You you only need all the answers to finish. You don't need all the, and I want to get both of those sentences on a shirt. You don't need to have all the answers to start, dot, dot, dot. You need only all the answers to finish. That would be an awesome shirt. Now i got something to print. When open issues remain on a backlog, uh, or let's scratch that. Let's try it one more time. When open issues remain on backlog items uh, are brought into the sprint, there will be times when those items are not finished in the sprint. And I'm going to argue that's okay. It's expected uh, to not finish everything every single sprint. What's not okay is slowing down by trying to rethink everything up front. Okay, let's stop there for a minute. This might be one place where we deviate a little bit. Um, I believe that, yes, items will carry over, but that what you should have should be enough to complete that item. And what I mean by that is, if you don't have all the information, then maybe create the first item to be a research item to gather information And then the deliverable or potentially shippable increment is the research, the discovery to research that you made, the time boxed research, right? And then once you have that, then you can seed out what the actual item is in the next sprint and complete the actual work. 
Unless, of course, it's something simple enough to pull in and do during the current sprint. And, and then it makes sense. But um, just like the quiz show, the answers will come eventually. And just like in the show, sometimes those answers will, will fail, fail to appear before the timer runs out on the sprint. Uh, as one of the contestants quipped, I'm prepared to fail spectacularly. So sometimes you you don't have all the answers by the end of the sprint. And I think that's okay. And I think that's what Mike's saying. But it doesn't mean it works. It's not giving you permission or a ticket to carry things over from one sprint to another every sprint. That's irresponsible, and it sets false expectations for the organization. Our goal should be to try to get as many of those things done as we can in a timely manner and to make sure we're finishing the things that we committed to. But we also have to recognize that even sometimes, uh, even they sometimes fall short. Teams will do a lot of learning while they search for the answers. They learn about the product, and they also learn about a lot about how to work together and how to communicate and how to embrace uncertainty. And that learning is one of the keys to ultimately succeeding with your agile implementation. So it's one of these things where we need to make sure that teams have the right level of information so that they can have confidence, but not every detail. If you're spoon feeding every detail to the team, you're setting false hope and false expectations going forward that the team will always have that level of detail for everything that they work on when in actuality, that's usually not the case. So I think it's a balancing act. And I think that as long as we understand it's a balancing act and as long as we work together to, to help figure it out and to solve the initiative, I think that we are going to be better for it. And I think that the organization is going to benefit from that type of implementation of Agile. In other words, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to have every single thing defined and broken out and, and just, you know, uh, all under control when you, uh, when you approach uh, work. You need to have everything defined in such a way that you have enough information to get the ball rolling and know that you're moving it in the right direction and have some definition of increment that can be delivered each sprint so that the team can feel their way towards progress. That's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And thanks again, Mike, for the wonderful email. If you have a topic you want us to cover, learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. Mm-hmm.